Hi, this is video two of um, the uh, following the quick start guide, the videos that Andre put together, and the checklist that I modified for the SSG Embraer 195. You can also use it for the 170. You should be able to, anyways. Video one covered basic startup and um, uh, guiding all the way to the point of taxing. We are ready to start taxiing now and with this video the second video we are going to do a um, the taxi takeoff and climb to the top of climb the third video we are going to do the descent and um, landing for into San Francisco so this is Reno KRNO to San Francisco KSFO uh, using the Embraer 195. Uh, this is second video, as I mentioned, which is the takeoff, climb, uh, and uh, portion of the of the video. So we've got our. I've had. Um, this is the sixth video I've or sixth flight that I'm making and the third video trying to get everything working uh, correctly this is to me it is not an easy plane to fly especially coming from Zeebo uh, Airbus uh, 767 even the Dash 8 um, this has been the most challenging aircraft that I have uh, but I think it has the most potential too because it's it's a jet um, it's a regional that will fly into a lot of the smaller airports, so I really, really want to master this uh, airplane. I, as I mentioned in the last video, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm just struggling along with a lot of other folks that are coming from, a lot of people are coming from flying uh, the Zeebo 737, um, you know, the 767 Dash 8 want to upgrade to a jet um, and are looking at the forums people are having issues uh, trying to master this plane so I'm hoping that uh, if I make mistakes please let me know uh, and so we can all share or you know share best practices and things like that been to me it's been a little bit of a challenge to get support from the forums uh, get a lot of times you get reference so I'll just look at the the quick reference guide. Look at the uh, the the uh, sample flight, and um, I've wanted to put something together that was uh, had a, a little bit more detail than um, than those that documentation. I've also had a bit of a challenge trying to find an actual FCOM flight documentation uh, for the EJET. I'm curious as to what. Um, is um, actually the standard procedure to do and how much that differs between the the SSG EJET. All right so we are ready to come around and do our final takeoff steps prepare preparation KRNO to KSFO, KSFO. We are using real weather out of X plane. Okay, parking brake is engaged. We've got a light here. Thrust levels are auto, idle, uh, brake, RTO, takeoff config test. No takeoff. Brakes. We've got uh, brakes as our only error message, or so that is correct. We do have brakes on. Uh, ICAS looks okay. Request takeoff clearance. All right. F8 to bring up the radio. We are takeoff. Taxi lights off. Strobe light on. Landing gear on landing gear, landing lights, <clears throat> and auto throttle is on. So we've got auto throttle, we've got takeoff mode. Heading sync, 
at InSync. Uh, 161, it was 164. Um, you know, as long as you're in the right direction, then that's fine. We probably aren't quite exactly lined up there. All right, spool up to 40%. All right, take off thrust. Take off, okay. All right, just advance the throttle up to the point where the um, it flashes takeoff and it says that we've got uh, the auto throttle, <coughs> auto throttle has engaged. And we are rolling. Our, we have our speed tape is active, which for some reason the last video that I did, um, <laughs> the, it did not go Eight active. Nine. I don't know what, what was going on there. We are a little bit heavy today, I think. We're taking up most of the runway. V1, VR, V2. All right, rotate. Positive rate gear up. Laps up one. Flaps up two, trying to bring my speed up. Speed to FMS mode. And LNAV mode. Okay. Okay, we've got flaps up. Gear is up. Thousand feet, so we V nav. Uh, let's see, altitude select. We can go up to go ahead and roll it up to thirty thousand now. I do get confused on the vertical navigation uh, flight plan and the codes that are used. Sorry about that if I flashed that. Uh, I was going to bring up my notes.
All right, we are matching our climb pretty good. Let's increase our range. Bring up our CDU. We can also do a shift F8 to bring up the navigation display. Um, and you can actually change things here by clicking on these buttons here. Click on change the range and it comes in a little bit handy here. This is something that is covered in Andre's videos in a little bit more detail in my notes on his videos. Passing through 10,000 feet, we've got sterile cockpit off, landing lights off. And we'll go ahead and do a stand set barometer to standard. And we're going to keep the passengers sitting down because this is a very short flight. Seems like we are um, increasing altitude at a very slow rate. Uh, I think we should be F FBA altitude select. All right, so we are we're going 288, and um, our we're not matching our flight plan. See, it, this is one of the things. Every seems like every time I fly this plane, something goes wrong or doesn't follow what I what it should. Uh, because we should have, we should be able to follow the top of the plan uh, for the, uh, the the top of climb, and we should be well. According to my notes, flight change is actually the. Flight change in magenta is what uh, Andre had. Let's look at our progress. We've got top of climb in 43 nautical miles. So if we go to the map mode a little bit, uh, we could, uh, there's traffic, TCAS, uh, and this is also where we uh, select weather, 
want to monitor the weather. We got clear skies here, so we're not going to see anything there. Uh, and terrain, uh, which we're up high enough that we don't have to worry about terrain, but we will should have had it on when we took off, I suppose. And we will turn it on when we are landing. We'll go ahead and uh, turn it off there. Additional notes, like, like I said, in my notes, my uh, notes for the uh, from Andre's video. Okay, so when we get to our target altitude, um, we will see flight change here in Magenta should change to A cell when it gets close to target and then alt altitude when it reaches the target. Oh, we're looking better now. So without doing, well, actually with doing flight change, we are looking much closer to matching the flight plan there. So um, that was my mistake earlier in switching um, the VNAV mode too early, I guess. Or not, no, just messing with it. I probably should have left it alone. So since we're um, we're going to get top of descent really close to the top of um, climb, let's go ahead and do some planning there. Uh, we already mentioned that we're going to be coming in at bricks at 11,000 feet and then swinging over to Archie at 7,000 feet. So we're going to set our target altitude for um, descent at 7,000 feet. Now if we go to our 195 manual, our top of climb in our map there. So performance, landing, we do landing full flaps five, full or five. Press next page. We are currently at um, 97,700. So probably be 97, between 97 and 94. Let's go ahead and say 97 here. Um, so we want a VREF of 125. Turn on the keyboard. So 144. So VAP, wind. We're going to ignore the wind effect. There's not much wind. There we go, 125, 144, VAC, and 196 for VFS. Okay. Uh, top of climb, it's now moved down to 48. So we'll gotcha you on the ILS frequency. If we go over here, um, and go to our airport. So our, our landing frequency for ILS is 111.7. And um, notice that it says auto here. Um, 
if I try, I'm not going to do it over on this side because I already know it's not going to happen, but if I do 111.7 and try to enter it in here, it doesn't enter it in and it wipes out the auto. Uh, if I do put it in here, it says not found. So, I'm not certain what's going on there. I know from experience, though, that it will automatically fill in the 111.7 automatically. So, it knows the correct frequency. I just don't know how to set it here. Um, but that's the story for that. So, we are going to ignore the FMS ILS frequency and just say auto is good and I don't know how to put this back to auto either and we already talked about the target altitude frequency the target altitude period so what we're going to do here is um, slowly reach 30,000 and um, I could manually do a VS, but I wanted a uh, vertical speed. But I wanted the uh, wanted to f have the f airplane fly as automatically as possible, especially for those coming from um, planes that have a more sophisticated computer interface. Uh, to show that it, it it can be done, and uh, will. Uh, other than the mistakes that I've made as far as the VNAV mode and, and clicking on that, uh, things, things have been going pretty well. I hope this is helpful for folks. Uh, and um, if you like the video, go ahead and click like make any difference or not. I don't know how many videos I'm going to make or explain. But it, uh, and if you have any comments about uh, my, uh, how to improve this video from a, any respect, technical or otherwise, then go ahead and, and let me know. off the keyboard here and let's take a look one thing that's kind of neat if you like this view here then you do your shift F8 then you get a view of the airplane that you can move around in and then you also got your have a good idea of what's going on here. We're going around legs, and we can adjust our display there, and have a, here a little bit better information, a little bit better idea of how the plane is flying while you are hanging out by the wing. <laughs> um, some of the developers, you know. Got top of climb coming up here. And if we get to F8, we've got CDU. Looks pretty neat. Uh, it has some nice nice features, nice options. Notice we are 20 miles from top of climb, top of descent at 68. So at 30,000, we don't have a lot of extra spare, extra distance between top of climb and top of descent in case there was any issues that we had to deal with or anything like that. So I'm glad I dropped it down a little bit.
All right, just north of Sacramento, going by Yuba City, heading towards San Francisco. And if we select our star, here we're coming in, two legs. So, if you don't have a Navigraph uh, subscription, um, I have found it to be a lot more immersive, um, you know, having that subscription so I can have the charts and the active interface. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and leave this up and put it down in the corner here. Uh, F8 to see how we're doing for our climb. Because once we reach the top of climb, I will set our altitude, our target altitude to 7,000, close this video off, and then we will resume um, at the top of descent. We've got our buzzer going, which indicates that we're within 1,000 feet of top of climb. I can see the Pacific Ocean out there. Good progress, I think. Successful flight so far. I like this here. For it's pretty cool to show your the uh, the flight plan. And if you're doing manual flying, um, and uh, this comes in really handy to have the our your angle of flight uh, ang and uh, that is active there on the screen that you can actually look at where your next waypoint is and and how your um, how well you're manually flying to reach that point. Uh, today's video is uh, having the plane basically fly it, uh, itself. And, uh, that's it for that. Okay. We have top of descent now. Uh, top of climb is off of our progress page. We are almost to 30,000. select now and we want a target altitude right now we'll put it at 7,000 okay so it's uh, only a few minutes to top of descent we will go ahead and close off this video and um, We'll see you in video number three, where we do our descent and landing into San Francisco, uh, following the quick start guide and other resources, including the exit checklist. See you next video.